Welcome to Photokina 2018. We're here at the Camera Rescue booth uh, with Michael from Lomography. Hello. Uh, thanks for being here, Michael. So Lomography is a brand that I think everyone knows about because it's being very present in film when film went down, but also when film's coming back up, there's a lot of new cameras, emulsions, things that you guys are doing. So Michael, tell us a little bit about Lomography for to whoever's curious about it. Yeah, well, Lomography started um, a bit more than 25 years ago, we started like um, basically it was started as a movement which was about um, the classic Lomo LCA, which is like in a way similar to this one, if anyone still knows. So um, the cameras were like um, smuggled from former Eastern European countries to Austria, and there we started with the whole um, photography thing. Basically, it means that we did like a lot of exhibitions, uh, snapped a lot of pictures. And in this process, always said like um, you should be very spontaneous with shooting pictures. So we always saw like Lomography as a bit of an antidote to like the regular Canon photo. Uh, let's say like basically the classic photography back in the days where people mm -hmm. said like you have to have like um, this very specific composition of a picture. This is how you shoot. This is when you shoot. And um, the classic person back then they shot two rolls of film one during Christmas, one during the summer holidays, and it was always like the father of a family who shot the pictures. And we basically, back then, just a bit said, like, why not do it differently? Why not shoot pictures all the time? Why not um, shoot pictures like um, in funny ways or different ways? Spontaneous. I, spontaneous. I remember the manifesto yeah, was kind of the rules. Them. And this is like a very, like um, a bit of an Austrian thing where you basically say like to be taken seriously, you have to write the manifesto. And so we wrote the manifesto. And these are like old things which, um, and then we did, did also like, um, like a, it, it's like a non-profit company basically, which is like a, a club. Mm -hmm. So we started as a club, basically. We said, okay, you, to be taken serious, you need to write a manifesto, you need to write a club. And then we started the whole idea about embassies, ambassadors, so like people who like um, get the word out about Lomography all around the world. And then it was like, uh, like us having like a good time and fun and basically saying, okay, we're going to visit our ambassador in Cuba. So we had like ambassadors in Cuba, in Vietnam. And then this was like a very... Uh, driven like on this cultural like photography thing mm -hmm. and out of this like the Lomographic Society and that's why we're still like the Lomographic Society developed basically and this is also like how we did the whole um, change into a company at one point because at one point you couldn't do this as society anymore and um, we had to also like um, create some new products because the LCA also at one point like the production like um, was also not that secure anymore and so we had to I think it was a roughly 10 years ago we took over the production ourselves and, and like produced this and along the line we created a lot of different cameras in different areas no there's there's been a lot you've had the 120 version which yes. is very nice um, you're also doing a lot of cameras towards instant photography yes. so like instant photography started a few years ago and, and like it Actually, we did have like instant um, cameras a bit before that because we had instant packs for the LCA and the instant packs for the Diana camera. Which and the is, Holga, I think, had a pack Holga too. also had an instant pack and the Bel Air also had an instant pack. So we did like a few different instant packs over the time. And then people just said like, okay, I just want to have an instant camera. And there was like um, not a lot of options back then. Mm -hmm. And then so we said, okay, let's let's start one. And, and the first one we tried on Kickstarter just to see like, is there going to be like a demand for this? Will this work? And yeah, like people really liked it because it gave people a bit of a different approach also to like instant photography. And this is also what we expanded on like um, like in this instant world. And now we just released now for November the Diana instant camera, which is the first instant well the. Right now, the only instant camera produced, which takes all these different lenses. So we basically take the old Diana system; mm -hmm. people can use it. No, I've seen the fish eye, so it can do like the circle inside yeah, the so square and all these circle, things. Circle, wide angle, telephoto. Um, and you have all the options because we said, look, there's so many people who have the Diana; they might not shoot anymore with this because like 120 film development got so expensive. Mm -hmm. Let's just give them an option of like a new way of like shooting with the Diana and like taking this aesthetic to a, like a new. So you've had, uh, you have a production of cameras, which yep. is pretty big. You have quite a few cameras out there. 
and you also make film yes. uh, under Lomography. Yeah. So, have you felt that uh, you are working with collaboration with other people? You're coming out with new films slowly. How is that working? No, well, basically, what we what we saw like. Um, Massively, it's like in the past we would only have like one film, for example. Like um, we started because there were like so many people still offering films, so it wasn't like something we we got into. But then now, like in the last years, um, we saw like this huge demand suddenly for film and also like for very special um, formats. And also we, we we did say like, look, we gotta do something because um, more and more film is being dropped from other like um, lines, basically. So we said, okay, we're going to come up with our own films, and we're going to come up with our own ideas. And so we developed especially this um, Lomochrome purple film and the whole red scaling of like uh -huh. film. So we're taking a lot of like ideas which um, we come up with and then try to see like how is this possible. And especially for this Lomochrome purple film, we said, okay, does this infrared look um, and, and like all these ideas about color shifting. So why can't we take this and come up with something new? And something which is also like very accessible to people in a way where you say like okay you can develop it as a color negative, you don't have like all these additional costs, and this is where we also want to uh, expand more on like really like come up with like new emulsions, new ideas, and, and new ways of like um, taking taking pictures and, and having a bit more of a creative approach like to these things. And this is where we really want to grow our like assortment, mm -hmm. and and we have like all this. Um, special things now for example we do 110 we're the, pretty much the only ones doing that uh -huh. and and we also see here like at the photo kina constantly people come up like what's up with the 110 film what's up with the lomochrome purple film and there's like so much um demand now like on this film that also all these cameras we see also like suddenly like the sales of our lca are going up the sales of our like regular like um all these feature based cameras mm -hmm. everything is now like going up again and and you had like a bit of a situation where like the the market was a bit stale mm -hmm. and but instant was like booming so yeah. like our also for us like this instant category was like really working out well but now you're going again into this um situation where also like the regular um like regular film photography is like really really going strong yeah i i think there's a lot of change and also a lot of young people yeah because demography has been doing different things like you said not the traditional photography back 25 years ago yeah. nowadays a lot of people are stuck in the everything is you know your our phones takes pictures it's always pretty much perfect yeah. and then we're using applications that add filters or grain or dust or all these weird yeah. things but lamography is very much that but in the real way like you can shoot film you can get that if you like the texture, you like different color shifts like that, you guys are providing yeah. that kind of experience. You are also doing a lot of developing and um, scanning in your own uh, stores. Yeah. So is that something that you also seen increase? This is like, oh, like this has been like constantly increasing also because the thing is that more and more labs closed. Mm -hmm. But what was so like also like in the last, uh, I would say even in the last two years, is that like a lot of like special labs are starting. So especially now, like in France, there are like a lot of new ones. Then all of these labs also develop also like uh, to be more of like a hub for like analog photographers, which is great. Like they're like adding like film sales, camera sales, and they're coming up like with new ways yeah. of how can this be a community space? Because mm -hmm. people like photographers go there, they want to exchange ideas, and they also might want to show like some pictures in an exhibition. And so like that's also what we try to do with our stores. Mm -hmm. But there's. I mean, we're like limited to like certain cities. So, but the cool thing is like what's happening. It's happening all around the world right now. So, like you have like this yeah, the internet's resurgence. helping that not only the yeah. stores can be a place, but you know we all share through social media yeah. and, and then and you have like all this exchange and, and I would say like also in this analog world, um, obviously like this that so many people got into instant photography is also helping like the regular like um, like film photography because mm -hmm. then people are like saying okay. Let's try like a regular camera. Yeah, not instant, you know, yeah, something instant, yeah, something because normal. Because so you have certain limitations always with the instant format. Yes, yes, it is. The sharing, I love sharing because I can take a picture, yeah. give it to you, but then I can't share it maybe with friends. Yeah. So the way that you can scan and share, and most so people shooting topic. film are scanning to share. Yeah, So exactly. that's a different thing. 
Um, is there any other projects that Lomography doesn't seem to stop? So anything down the line that we should be expecting at any time soon? I mean, basically what we're also like working on is the lenses. Mm -hmm. So basically we're also coming up with like, okay, what else can we do in this lens world? Like just manual lenses, there's like a lot of options and we have a lot of ideas. And now it's just like bringing these ideas to reality. So we can only do like one project by another and then, and then like try to figure out like the next things. And then we're also like thinking about some more accessible and easy camera projects. So we're like right now like uh, a bit experimenting around like with, with some ideas and, and hopefully this is something we can then like release next year. So okay. I would say we always have like um, something two happening. to three camera projects always like a bit in, in the works and then we see like during this process okay, what's more viable, what can we produce in a good way, and, and how's the response also like from community members and how's the response of like testers. Because at one point we then start talking to people, showing them things and trying out things. Once we know it's like technically feasible, so like that's Yeah, you, gotta, process. you go one step at a time and release. Exactly. So yeah, uh, anything else you want to add about Lomography, about what you felt? Uh, you said there's an increase. Um, how is this photo key now? Have you seen a lot more movement the last edition? Were you guys here last edition? I can't remember right yeah, now. Yeah, like we've been here like since, I think like almost since 20 years. Like since since the very, very start, like uh -huh. we've been here. And, and I mean, the thing that's always great for us is like to see that um, there's still like all these um, young people coming into like photography and like we're constantly having like all this. It's not like something that just, because sometimes you read like these articles and people are saying like, okay, film photography is dying, this and that is dying, but then you really have like a very fresh outlook on things if you're here, because there's also like all these great new things happening and, and these new projects and like all these other brands are also here. And that's always great to see for us. And then you're always talking to people and people have like the same feeling right now. So yeah, it's a, there's think, a good vibe. I there's think, a good vibe general. right now. And, and which is sometimes opposed to what you would read like in, like how people would like paint a picture like for photography. And I think that the, the outlook for the niche and with which analog photography always is, is like um, quite good. While the general outlook is maybe not that good because like um, like on a digital world, you're feeling now very, very strongly the cell phones and like and yeah. all of this happening. Oh, I mean, I think cell phones have affected a lot of the traditional or digital yeah. cameras sales, but film has being so different. Yeah, it's that been, it's we've been anyway going are, down already, like yeah. huge, like a few years ago, and now it's like really, and that's a great thing also, like we see at Lomography. Um, you can reinvent yourself, you can come up with new ideas, and that's like what we also think is very exciting and, and what we want to do. Because we now really see, like something like the Lomo Chrome Purple film, for example, a few years ago when we launched it first time, like people were skeptical, and like also stores were like, I, I don't know if I can sell this, this is like too special, uh, yeah. I want to have like traditional films. But now, that's not even a question anymore. Like it, it, it just flies off the it shelf. It just flies off the shelf. People want to have it. People are like understanding what this is about. And so you had like a shift of like, um, where people say like, okay, they're open for more experimental things, more creative like mm -hmm. approaches. And this is like great for us because now we we're like, okay, cool. Like what else? Do can we, we have do like it, here? Yeah. What else can we do here? And, and this is what we want to continue now. Now that I was talking to Kodak just before you, yeah. and the fact that I think Lomography and other small, well, you know, guys are not small, but you know what I mean? Like things that have, compared to Kodak back in the day, like have changed the big players to start turning their heads and start making film, yeah. new, old, old new film, let's say, again, does that feel like it's, I mean, I think it's great for all, but are you guys excited to see these things coming out? No, we too. Uh, like, uh, I find it great that like Kodak is coming out again with film, and uh, also would find it great if like um, like Kodak um, would keep their film range yeah. as it is now. I mean, that's always a bit of question: is like what's going to happen? Like, uh, let's say one or two years down the line. Like, um, but it's a very good signal, and, and everything that's happening you know, with the uh, with the new Kodak film Super Eight, everything. And I wish it was even happening faster because yeah, we're all like, excited. We were, yeah, want we it were like excited, and they're like teasing you so long. And, and then I'm like, come on, like let's release this. Let's let's well, get it's, on it's with happening it. very soon. So yeah. and um, and I think always like anything like that's done on such a big level, which also creates such a buzz, and everything is good for everyone. And that's yes. like always. I, I mean, love to read about like analog photography everywhere, and and 
if Lomography is the company that can get like into certain press, then it's also good for everyone else. And, it is, and that's it why is. I love like Kodak because they have like such a mass market appeal. Everyone is writing about them if this is happening. Yes, and yes, it's getting it in some new people, and that's always like the great thing. Okay, well, thank you very much for coming over and yeah. having this interview. Thank you. Um, I hope you guys have a great fair. There's not much Thanks. left, but I, yeah. I hope to see you in May uh, back here. Yeah. Thank great, you. Great. Great. Thanks. Thanks.